Number 5. Builders, reuse this painted relief block in the foundation of Ramus's Forest Mortuary Temple, subsequently excavated by the Metropolitan Museum. In the relief, Western Asian soldiers are shown being trampled under the horses that pull the royal chariot, signaling the foreigners' defeat in battle by the might of the Egyptian pharaoh. When the piece was excavated, this and another fragment of a battle scene, 1380-22, were dated to the reign of Ramesses II. A recent study of their stylistic and iconographic features, however, has caused scholars to redate them earlier, probably to the reign of Amenhotep of II. This redating indicates that by the middle of the 18th dynasty, monumental battle scenes had become part of the decorative scheme of a temple's exterior walls. Number 4. This small ivory box has a lid that is pegged at one end, allowing it to swivel open and closed. The hole at the other end of the lid once held another peg. When closed, the peg in the lid and the peg protruding from the box could be bound together with string to keep the box from opening. The top of the box has been decorated with incised lines that form a rosette framed by a zigzag pattern. The rosette was probably made using an early type of compass. The decoration was once filled with a material called Egyptian blue. Boxes similar to this one, made of wood, bone, or ivory, probably held dry cosmetics such as rouge. Number 3. The cat first appears in painting and relief at the end of the Old Kingdom, and this cosmetic jar is the earliest known three-dimensional representation of the animal in Egyptian art. The sculptor demonstrates a keen understanding of the creature's physical traits, giving the animal the alert, tense look of a hunter, rather than the elegant aloofness seen in later representations. The rock crystal eyes, lined with copper, enhance the impression of readiness. Number 2. Egyptian scribes perfected their skill in the art of writing as apprentices. They would copy hieroglyphs and phrases on chips of stone and fragments of pottery, ostraca, or on whitewashed writing boards. A scribe would have owned a writing palette like this one, which provides space for two colors of ink and a slot for reed brushes. Egyptian scribes use brushes, not pens. Number 1. This statuette of a hippopotamus, popularly called William, was molded in fans, a ceramic material made of ground quartz. Beneath the blue glaze, the body was painted with lotuses. These river plants depict the marshes in which the animal lived, but at the same time their flowers also symbolize regeneration and rebirth as they close every night and open again in the morning. The seemingly benign appearance that this figurine presents is deceptive. To the ancient Egyptians, the hippopotamus was one of the most dangerous animals in their world. The huge creatures were a hazard for small fishing boats and other river craft. The beast might also be encountered on the waterways in the journey to the afterlife. As such, the hippopotamus was a force of nature that needed to be propitiated and controlled, both in this life and the next. This example was one of a pair found in a shaft associated with the tomb chapel of the steward Senbai II at Mare, an upper Egyptian site about 30 miles south of modern Asiat. Three of its legs have been restored because they were probably purposely broken to prevent the creature from harming the deceased. The hippo was part of Senbai's burial equipment.